Check, please. Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have purchased Allegheny Insurance. We'll talk about this purchase, why they made it, why Buffett loves insurance and what he's been doing with it, what he saw in this company and what they're doing moving forward. This company is incredibly interesting. Paul explains how insurance companies work to me because I'm a little in the dark and we'll see why that he loved this company. Let's get after it. Paul, tell me about Buffett, why you love him and Allegheny Insurance. Okay, guys, so Allegheny Insurance. So if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I like to stay in my sphere of competence. Insurance and banks are not my sphere of competence. However, I will say, that the idea here is to understand why Warren Buffett likes insurance companies. In cash and short-term investments, they have $138 billion. How much are they spending to buy Allegheny, Seth? 11.6 bill. And they're paying Kizash. Why? Because they got it. Mm. Now, how does Warren Buffett, if you read any of his reports or listen to him for four seconds, one of the reasons he's been able to make such a huge return on his money is because he uses borrowed dollars for nothing. Say again? So here's how insurance works. Seth, when you buy insurance, mm -hmm. the insurance company is basically betting that they're going to pay that money out yes. in some fashion while the time you're a, a client. At some point in the future, they're going to pay out all that money. That's a weird concept. That I buy, I'm buying life insurance. I tell my kids, I'm basically betting them I am going to die. Yes, but they're actually thinking to themselves, we're not going to make money, money off of you. What they're going to do, though, is they're going to use that what's called float. So you give them $1,000 every six months for your car insurance. Thanks for explaining it because I don't get it. Go ahead. They take that 1000 bucks and they reinvest it. And all the while they're waiting to pay out that $1,000 eventually over time, they're investing it and making a return on that money. So the whole goal is if they, if they invest, if they are correct in their underwriting of Seth and 10 million other people, they're going to sit there and say, we brought in a billion dollars in, in, um, in, in revenue this year. Over the next five years, we're going to make out, we're going to make, we're going to spend a billion dollars. Well, for example, I do pay a thousand bucks a year for life insurance. And if I die, they're going to give my wife a million. So right. But then they have 5 million people out there all doing it. 20,000 are going to die. Is that how it works? And, the, and 5 million people have given them a thousand dollars each and they paid out a million bucks on whatever the number is. I don't know. I am speaking hypotheticals. The point is that's what insurance is. Insurance is the insurance businesses, we are going to pay this all out at some point. But in the meantime, until we do, we're going to invest that money at higher rates of return and make the spread. So they're borrowing, essentially borrowing. Their goal is to borrow at 0% interest. Mm -mm -mm. If their underwriting profits are negative, they're basically paying that their negative profit is what they're paying to have that money in their float. So Buffett has loved Geico for a zillion years. Did he start it or, or no? He did not start it. Oh no, 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 no. He did not. It was publicly traded when he was a kid, uh -huh. I believe. The point is, Buffett looks at insurance companies and goes, "If I can find a good insurance underwriter, if I can find a company that that properly underwrites insurance, and it costs them zero, or they can make a few bucks in the insurance, I can also take that float and buy and use that money to make money in the long run." So, Paul, this float concept, what is this and how much do they have? Okay, so so if you look at their annual report, Warren Buffett every year writes a letter, puts it in his annual report. He discloses this. So here it is. This is his annual letter for 2021 that he just released. In 1967, Berkshire's float was $19 million, and now it's $147 billion. So essentially, he has $147 billion of which he can use whatever he wants to use with it. Basically, it's free. It's like your uncle who loves you so much says to you, hey, you know what, Billy? I like you so much. You can borrow money from me. And as long as you pay me back, I'm good. That's what that is. He's got his favorite uncle giving him $147 billion. I'm confused why he's sitting on so much cash, Paul. This seems silly in a grand well, market like now. Warren Buffett's old. He doesn't get it. No, he doesn't see good deals. He and Charlie Munger talk about this all the time. They said this is the hardest time they've experienced for finding deals in their careers. Charlie Munger is a billion and four years old. Yes. Warren Buffett is 800 million years old. Mm -hmm, like a dinosaur. T-Rex. Fake. So the whole point is they don't see any good. So they have a lot of casting around. But when it comes to something like Allegheny, they can go out there and write a check and say, this is a good insurer. I'm assuming. And by the way, the other thing comes, Allegheny's new CEO, who just came in, in the last few months, used to run Berkshire's insurance business from 01 to 08. I see. It's a little... So you know Warren Buffett believes in that company if the guy who ran his insurance business 
is now CEO there. If you need the data to make better investing decisions, you can have our software. Go to everythingmoney.com or patreon.com slash everythingmoney. You can have all the data, all the software behind Paul. Watch a lot of our other videos. You can see how we use it, how we analyze companies like Buffett does, and how we come up with the stock price using that stock analyzer tool. So what is he seeing in this company in particular? He sees good float and good underwriting. That's what he sees. Because mm. he paid a huge premium over their stock price. Right? Let's look at Allegheny. Let's look at their stock price here in our Everything Money software. Let's go back to the beginning. Eight pillars. Allegheny. Uh, how do you, wait, what's their ticker symbol? I don't okay. even know how to spell it. It's Y. Oh, yeah, it's Y. I knew that. Allegheny Corp. I, look at the stock price. <laughs> Is that good? Well, so they were at $648 a share, and now they're at 844 When they announced the deal, they were at... 676 a share. And they're buying at 848 a share. Yeah. And because Warren Buffett went and paid above the market. I guarantee there is somewhere in here that Buffett was buying as well. Mm-hmm. I because they don't oh they don't sit there and just announce it. They accumulate as much as they can. And Warren Buffett has a specific deal with the SEC where if he gets more than five percent, usually the rule is if you acquire more than five percent of a business, it's immediately disclosed. He gets a little more time because he went to the SEC and said, listen, guys. It's hurting my investors for me being able to, having to announce a 5%, I can't build enough. And they gave him an exception or something like that. Buffett has been following and observing this company for 60 years. And Vice Chairman Charlie Munger, of course, he's upset about the acquisition. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And by the way, that just goes to show Munger and Buffett are very like-minded people and they disagree on Allegheny. I'm still trying to figure out why Berkshire hasn't announced a stake in Alibaba, which I'm wondering if that's going to happen this quarter when all, when all the 13 Fs come around and people have to disclose. I just wonder if that's going to happen. But either way, Allegheny is just another insurance provider. There will always be insurance because even if we have electric cars, there's still going to be... Guys, the crazy thing is you have to figure out... like There's still going to be insurance for everything. There's still going to be natural disasters. There's still going to be all this stuff that's happening. There's always going to be insurance. So Warren Buffett's goal is, I want to get that free money from, from the insurance companies to go invest at higher rates of return. Folks have asked you, this: if I'm a shareholder at 844, or if this somehow drops prior to this acquisition or doesn't go through, do I make a play on Allegheny? Is there for normal people? I don't do this? that. If you want to do that, by all means, go for it. I don't do that. My guess is this deal is going through. Buffett doesn't announce things and then cancel, usually. If you go look at Buffett's history, you're not going to see many cancellations. So do you want to go make half a percent uh, in the next whatever time, go for it. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. So I want to make note of something, guys. The stock is up 25% and the PE is still only 11. Oh, wow. So this was incredibly undervalued at the moment. Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. Their free cash flow last year was 1.77. Their five-year average was 850. Okay. So he went and bought a company for 13 or 14 times free cash flow that he knows inside and out that he can then use that cash to go invest it at higher rates of return. Is that something you would have bought having given the chance? Uh, I don't understand insurance companies, so mm-hmm. I would not have bought it. Guys, I stay in my circle. If I don't understand it, I don't do it. Does that mean I don't want to understand insurance? Absolutely not. I'd love to understand insurance, but I'm, I haven't found somebody competent enough to teach me insurance. I called Warren Buffett. He did not answer my phone call. Didn't return that voicemail? No, he did not. He doesn't have voicemail. <laughs> I sent him an email. WB at BerkshireH.com. I'm just kidding. So anyways, that's my take on... Uh, the Buffett acquisition. I, I mean, I'm not going to ever question his insurance. He knows insurance. Now, Munger obviously is questioning it, but I didn't even know that. I thought they were on the same page on that one. I watched a YouTube vid just last week on, it was a Berkshire, it was, it was Warren Buffett giving a speech about how he wanted to buy a couple companies, one of which was Hertz, oh. and, and Enterprise, Enterprise. Oh. And he was basically, anyway, just the way he tells a story about uh, how he just looks at companies, sometimes begs these people to, to sell the companies when he sees great value. And with, with Enterprise, the guy declined and is now one of the, t- he started at 40 years old, he started with 17 rental cars and is now one of the biggest rental car companies in the world. And Buffett has, has since befriended this owner. I forget his name, Jack is his name. And, uh, but he was just the chase. I mean, Buffett loves chasing down companies. And frankly, Paul, you and I look at companies all the time. I mean, I was talking, I, I actually called you yesterday about a company locally here in the Akron area. <laughs> Yeah. Not a good one, but I want to run some. I don't know if it's good or you. bad. I just don't want to be in that business. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a bar business. Yeah, but I was asking you number wise. You know, if you had, well, I had nothing. You had nothing to give me except for revenue. 
revenue and price. He likes companies to pursue them, but he won't overpay. Mm -hmm. He won't pay more than he, I shouldn't say he won't overpay. He won't purposely overpay. He has bought companies that he regrets months later. He goes, oh, I, I misvalued. I've literally seen him, heard of him talk like a year later going, yep, I misvalued that company and wrote it down 80%. Like yeah. I was just wrong. Okay. But all in all, he pays what he thinks is an adequate price. He's got 85, 90 businesses in his portfolio, lots of stocks, and he's very happy with his portfolio. And that's that. That's our take. Fondle thumbs up, subscribe, and you can see Paul have not the desire to do many things on this channel. <laughs> see you next video. <laughs>